give you a quick overview of what you're going to be reading about in Chapter 7, which focuses on the functions of a database management system. Your only assignments for this chapter are to read the chapter, and as you read, you can complete the Chapter 7 listening guide, and then you are going to answer three questions, all centering on the Colonial Adventures Tours case in your book. And for the three questions that you're going to answer, you won't have to actually make changes to the database. You are going to think through, if you were managing that database, what would you actually do with um, the questions that it asks you. And you can either type your answers in a Word document or directly into Blackboard. So the Chapter 7 Listening Guide has for you several questions that you can answer either as you read or maybe it would be better for you to read the whole chapter first and then go back and think about these questions and you can see that they're kind of um, separated by the parts of the chapter that they are from and these are really more critical thinking types of questions so there might not just be one absolutely correct or incorrect yes or no type of answer to all of these questions. Everybody who turns this in might have a slightly different way of thinking about it and those might not be necessarily um, incorrect such as looking at the network use policy we have here at the college. I would assume that everybody might have some different ideas for modifications to that. So don't worry about absolute black and white right or wrong. I want to know what you think about these questions. Chapter 7 does discuss the major functions of database management systems. So you're going to be looking at those functions which are listed here for you and this is just one of the slides from your chapter 7 presentation. The functions are things like updating and retrieving data, um, supporting concurrent update, recovering data, um, providing security services, and data replication, those types of things. And I just want to hit on a couple of highlights. For example, updating and retrieving data. That is, of course, one of the fundamental capabilities of your DBMS. That's why you use it, right, so that you can make updates to your data and get the data information that you need. Um, users of your database might not necessarily know exactly how your tables look and how exactly that data is stored, but even though they don't know that information because it might not be in the view that they're presented, they can add and change and delete different records. And then database management systems also provide catalog services and they do that a lot using metadata, which is really just data about data. So your DBMS is going to store metadata and make it accessible to users. And metadata is attached to lots of the data that we see and use in our everyday life. For example, every time you take a picture, even just with your phone, metadata is stored, um, such as what time that picture was taken, the location of where that picture was taken at, what type of phone or lens took that picture. So we're in contact with or use metadata all the time without even thinking about it. Database management systems also support the concurrent update, which just means that more than one person can be making updates to the same database at the same time. And sometimes with concurrent updates, problems can occur, such as losing updates if too many people are making the exact same changes to the exact same data at the same time. So database management systems help you avoid losing information um, in that way by doing a couple different things, one of which might be through doing batch processing. And then you're also going to be reading about two-phase locking, which solves that update problem so you don't lose data. So you will read about and learn about that. You'll also be reading about deadlock um, and how database management systems detect and break deadlock so that that doesn't happen. And then you'll read about recovery, how important recovery is, and why it is so important to back up and save your databases, and some different ways that that can be done. 
You will also be reading about and learning about how database management systems provide security services. And there are lots of common security features that are used such as encryption, authentication, authorizations, and then views, which you've read a little bit about in previous chapters, but it's kind of going to kind of break it down even more so that you'll learn exactly what encryption is and when it might be used versus authentication versus authorization versus using views. You'll also be learning about privacy and the right of individuals to have certain information about them kept confidential. And a lot of this should sound familiar because I bet you've all been to a doctor's office at some point in the last several years and had to sign some kind of HIPAA release. Well, there are actually laws and regulations that dictate privacy rules. Corporations have to follow certain laws, medical institutions have to follow certain laws, and we as schools and government institutions have to follow certain laws that are put into place to protect our privacy and you will be reading about those. You're also going to be learning about data integrity features which are rules that are followed to ensure that data is accurately and consistently updated. Um, so you'll be looking at four different ways that different integrity constraints are handled. You're also going to be reading about data replication and why you would want sometimes um, multiple copies of the same data in multiple locations. And then you'll read about utility services, which are services that might do things such as change the actual structure of the database and export and import data. and um, also provide support for queries and reports and that kind of thing. So chapter 7 again is all about the basic functions of database management systems and of course you guys know that Microsoft Access is the database management system that we are using in class. So after you read through chapter 7 just to make sure that you complete and submit your listing guide and answer those three questions on pages 249 and 50 to the best of your ability and let me know if you have questions.